Hey everybody, it's Mr. Kirk. Um, I've been told that I can put people to sleep. I don't believe it, but you know, to each their own. I'll try to be high energy today because we're talking about not just energy, but how objects get their energy. So I drank a bunch of caffeine. And I thought, let's get to it, all right? So thinking about our, uh, our problem that we're trying to solve, okay? We are trying to help um, our... Um, our rescue team. So in our warm-up today, we get this email um, from uh, Morgan Lewis that's saying the rescue workers need to have working equipment like flashlights and radios at all the times. They can't just always charge their equipment by plugging it in. So our job, our assignment, is to make sure that the rescue team's equipment works in any emergency situation. Okay, that's what we're going to try to solve. So you've got a couple of questions here. Uh, we'll take a few minutes, have you answer those questions, and then uh, we'll get into activity two. All right, so uh, hopefully you pause the video and you got a chance to, uh, to work on activity two. We're gonna talk about different energy claims here so we can get a better understanding of where objects get their energy. So again, remember, we're student energy scientists, and we are trying to solve a very specific problem to help our rescue team. And that leads us to our chapter two question, which is how can the rescue workers get energy to the batteries in their equipment during rescue missions? All right, so all throughout chapter two, this is the question that we're gonna to try to solve. And it leads us to this investigative question, how objects get energy? We need to know how objects get energy. So there's basically three claims that we're going to look at. All right, we're gonna look at um, the possibility that objects make their own energy. That's claim number one. Claim number two is that objects get energy from other objects that have energy, right? And then finally, claim number three, that only living organisms have energy. So take a second and pick which claim you think um, is the most accurate. Claim one, claim two, or claim three. And then we're gonna build upon our understanding um, and see if we can narrow this down to, um, to one claim that we all agree with. All right, so take a couple seconds, pick claim one, claim two, or claim three. And, uh, and then, you know, I'll see, uh, whenever you click that, which claim you selected. And let's see if we can kind of delve into this a little bit. We can use the simulator to investigate this. So we'll, um, we're going to use the sim to, uh, to learn more about how objects use and gather uh, energy. And we're going to use the evidence from that in our reasoning tool to connect the evidence. First, we need to talk about what generators are. And we talked about this last week when we did um, our demonstration in class. But a generator is just one device that you might use as part of your energy system, OK? Um, there are a bunch of different devices you can use, but generators are extremely helpful because they can convert, which means change, kinetic energy into electrical energy. So they can take something that's moving and convert that into electricity that then we can use that electricity for other things. So if we were gonna use the, the sim to, uh, to build a case for something, let's just pick claim number three, all right? Claim number three is that only living things have energy. And let's like build a system and test whether or not the evidence supports claim uh, number three or not, okay? So look at this model here and I want you to ask yourself, how does this model provide evidence about claim number three, that only living things have energy? All right, well, first off, um, you know, is there any living thing in this system? Well, you know, the LED light is not a living thing, right? The battery is not a living thing. The generator is not a living thing. Oops. 
Uh, the engine's not a living thing. The fuel is not living, although some of you might be arguing, well, Mr. Kirk, it used to be living, right? That's the problem with fossil fuels. They come from things that are fossilized, things that used to be living. So that used to be a living thing. Okay, fair enough. Let's delve into this a little bit. So let's watch this quick little video and see if it helps our understanding better. This is the Harnessing Human Energy Simulation. It lets you build, run, and analyze energy systems. Let's build a new system with fuel as the energy source. We'll add an engine, generator, battery, and an LED light to the system. Let's set the amount of energy to 100. Now, let's run the system. Observe what happens to the energy. Press transfer to make the LED light shine. It works. All right, so based upon this system and what we just saw in the video there, let's discuss whether or not our evidence supports or goes against the claim that only living things have energy. And remember, if you picked claim three because um, you you thought that was the correct claim, and we end up disproving it, like you know, spoiler alert, we're going to. Don't take that personally. In science, I've told you it's not about whether we get it right so much as we get the right answer. Okay. So in looking at this system. There's, there's ener clearly there's energy in this system. How do we know there's energy? Well, things are moving, right? So that's a good start. And I can make a case that things have changed, okay? And in the sim, we could look at the, uh, the analyze feature and we could look at heat that was coming out. That's another form of change. But just looking at moving, we know that the engine and the generator are moving. So there's obviously energy involved, okay? And is there anything that's living? So not that used to be living, but is there anything living in here? It needs food, it metabolizes. I mean, there's nothing here that, that meets that, those basic definitions of living, okay? So nothing here living. We do have evidence of energy. Therefore, we can conclude that claim three is false. Okay, so um, we can also take a look at the different types of like this chart shows us these labels. We start with the potential energy in the fuel and it goes to kinetic, connect to electrical. And then we get the battery gives us this potential and then the electrical. Um, and then, like I said, there's this nice feature. We've, we've talked about this where you can select um analyze and we can see that there's clearly energy in the system uh, we have thermal um, energy that's coming out of the system so we know that there's energy being transferred across the system okay so if we want to delve a little bit deeper into um, what happens to that energy? Here's a short little video to kind of help you explain that. Let's analyze the system we built. Press Analyze. The graphs here provide more information about what we observed when we ran the system. Scientists use graphs to help them represent data in a visual way. Let's replay the system and pay careful attention to what the graphs show. Go to the upper right corner and press the reset arrow. Then press play. These graphs give us evidence about what is happening with the energy. Next, we'll have a discussion about what each one shows. All right. So we get three different graphs when we break this down. We've got the, uh, the energy that's transferred in, uh, then we have the energy that's in the system, and then we have the energy that's transferred out, 
okay? All three graphs help us track how much energy came into the system and how much each type of energy is left in the system, okay? So when we look at this, we, and then we can roll this bar back and forth and see how it goes over time, all right? And then, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, where is the energy? Well, you know, we know that the battery stores some of that kinetic energy gets stored as potential energy, right? So we have energy that's in the system, and then we have energy that gets transferred out. And one thing I want to point out to you is that the, the energy in the system and the energy being transferred out, if we add those two together, 62 and 35, we get 97. So they're always going to add up. We're, oh, we're, this is a conservation of energy. We're not going to lose energy somewhere, okay? We can account for it. It may not all go where we want it, but we can account for it, okay? So what do you think the graphs will show after energy gets transferred from the battery to the light, okay? Well, when that happens, boom, this is what happens. The light, so you can see here, the thermal units go up, the light units go up, energy in the system goes down, right? And this is exactly what you expect from a battery. So this gives us some information about how these systems work, how you can use the analyze feature, so what did we observe? That the information in the graph um, helped us understand where the system was going, okay? What happens to energy in the system? Uh, and then we can see where that energy goes. So we can see how much energy comes in, we can see what happens to it when it's in the system, and then we can see how it gets transferred or how it leaves the system. In this case, light and thermal energy. Thermal energy is heat. So we get a fair amount of heat out of this. And if it was not an LED light, if it was like an incandescent bulb, it'd be even more, all right? And we can slide our bar back and forth and see at any particular time that we ran this where it was. But here you can see what I told you earlier, conservation of energy. We don't lose anything, right? Energy coming into the system was at 97. Energy that gets stored in the system in the battery mainly 62, energy that gets transferred out at this stage in thermal units is 35. So that adds up to 97. Bringing this back to claim number three, what when we look at what's observed here and we look at the evidence, does it support or refute claim number three? Well, it provides more evidence that there was energy in the system even though all the components of the system were not living. So this gives us even more data than just what we can see. This gives us actual numbers and data that of where the energy is and how much energy comes out and that there's nothing in the system that's, that's living, okay? So that just leaves claim one or claim two to be true that we would need to investigate. And by we, I mean you. So what you're gonna do is you're going to decide or plan how you might get evidence to support or go against the claim you select. So claim, uh, you wanna choose number claim number one, that objects can make their own energy or claim number two, objects get energy from other objects that have energy. Go ahead and, and think to yourself, which claim do you want to tackle, all right? And then we're gonna use this sim to get evidence to either support or go against the claim. And then we're gonna reinvestigate this using our reasoning tool. So decide, uh, we've, we've decided that claim three, we've shown using evidence that claim three is not accurate. So it's claim one, objects make their own energy, or claim two, that they, make, they get energy from other objects that have energy and you're going to use the the simulator tool to build a system to gather er energy to support or refute one of these claims you only need to use one of the claims you don't need to to tackle both of them right now 
and uh, and then you'll use the reasoning tool that we used last week. Um, remember the conversation we had about Coca-Cola and uh, whether it's good for you or bad for you and making a complete argument that is, um, you know, convincing, okay? And then finally, the homework section, all right? And the homework section is you'll build another two different systems. So you're gonna build one system for that to gather evidence about one of the claims. But then you're gonna go back and build two different systems and respond to some questions. And there's two questions you'll build. So you'll build two different systems, take snapshots of those and drop them in uh, for your homework. And then you have a couple of questions that uh, I want you to answer. Remember, you always answer using complete sentences. So I am not putting a restriction on the number of sentences that you need to, to use to answer this. You can use, you know, one sentence, you can use 10 sentences, whatever works, but you need to make sure that you use complete sentences. You start each sentence off with a capital letter, you end each sentence with a period, and every sentence is gonna have a subject, which is a noun, and a verb, all right? So I'll be looking for that, and, um, and you're just gonna answer those questions as completely as you can, okay?